welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that looks to answer exactly those. I'm Rebecca Felgate, and today we are talking about whether or not global warming is real, an issue of widespread political debate. Let's start off by saying that global warming isn't really the issue up for debate here. All scientific data tells us that the Earth has been getting hotter and hotter for the past 30 years. What we are really asking is, are humans and their man-made admissions the cause, or is this just natural climactic variation? In 2012, the United States had its hottest year on record, and as of 2016, the 10 warmest years for the entire planet have occurred since 1998. Glaciers are melting, plants are beginning to change their sprouting seasons, some animal species are relocating, and many places in the world are experiencing floods or droughts, depending on their geographic location. The widely accepted theory is that human activities since the Industrial Revolution in the mid 1800s, such as fossil fuel burning and farming industries, have released more gases into the air, such as methane, carbon dioxide, and nitrous oxide. These are known as greenhouse gases, as these trap heat in the layers of the atmosphere. Some carbon dioxide is good, as it keeps us warm, but the greenhouse effect, as it's called, is caused by there being too much. Our planets and trees can only absorb a certain amount of carbon dioxide, those we haven't cut down that is, meaning that the surplus of CO2 is staying in the sky and not leaving, meaning if nothing changes, the Earth will continue to get warmer, which could mean a change to life on Earth as we know it. 80% of people worldwide believe that human activity is a significant cause of climate change, compared to only 50% of people living in the United States. Why is that? Is it possible that the change in our climate has nothing to do with human endeavour? We know that our Earth alternates between periods of cold and warm. In the past, we have had at least five major ice ages, and actually, we're living in one right now. That's right, we are in an ice age. Perhaps we are simply coming out of it. In fact, carbon dioxide is key to getting out of ice ages. On top of that, things like solar activity, which by the way is at a historical high, ocean currents and cosmic waves can also have an effect on climate. A lot of global warming skeptics cite a seven year hiatus or pause in warming, but it turns out that that was actually based on incorrect data, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Another problem for the issue of global warming is the method of data collection itself. Our methods of collection are a touch flawed and have continued to change for the better since records began officially and consistency in 1873. What we do have though is some pretty consistent recent data that hopefully will help us in the future. Whoa, but hang on there for a second Rebecca. If records only began in 1873, how do we even know enough to draw sweeping conclusions? And wait, how do we even know that there was ever an ice age? Well, the short answer is paleoclimatology. Nature has left behind clues in things like rock and coral. Global warming skeptics often cite the Egyptian snowstorm of 2013, where in the capital of Egypt, Cairo, saw snow for the first time in 112 years. How can the world be getting warmer if warm places are experiencing cold snaps? Well, jet streams, bands of high speed winds from the upper atmosphere, responsible for warm and cool fronts, have been behaving more erratically, dipping further north and south respectively. This means some unusual places are experiencing freak weather. Another argument for global warming skeptics is the issue of the Antarctic, which has, if anything, got colder and icier. Now here it is important to note that there is a difference between glacial ice and sea ice. The latter is something that contracts and expands with the season. In the Antarctic, continental ice is melting and sea ice is increasing by about 1% a decade, meaning the ocean level is rising. But don't get me wrong, it is always cold up there. It freezes in the winter, making it look icier as there is more of it on the sea. The Antarctic has actually lost about 100 billion tons of continental ice in the past 15 years. This has caused global sea levels to rise by 0.2 millimeters a year. Of course, those questioning what we know about global warming are right to do so. Science is about a constant analysis of the facts. All good scientists continue to look for answers. But what if there are other forces at play here? What if the quest for knowledge in regards to global warming has one big problem? 
politics. Europe, Japan, China, New Zealand and many more eco-friendly countries agree that global warming is an issue. Why do some American politicians not agree? Well, the answer is logical. The current American economy hangs in the balance. America's economic success has a lot to do with oil and farming, two industries pumping out a lot of greenhouse gases. Some think the cost of finding alternative fuels is simply too overwhelming for companies currently making money hand over fist. For now, let's take politics out of it and look at the citable facts. Yes, nature has had periods of temperature fluctuation, that is true, but these days we are creating more carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases than ever before thanks to our on earth lifestyle and population swell. We are also cutting down more trees than ever before to make space for more people, meaning the earth's abilities to absorb carbon dioxide has decreased while our rate of production has increased. This means what can't be absorbed goes into the earth's atmosphere and stays there. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere raises temperatures and that is a simple fact. The more we add, the warmer it will get. The earth is getting warmer than it has ever been before and the weather is reaching new extremes. Is this cause for an immediate Armageddon style panic? No. Does it mean that if we continue to pump out gases and cut down forests without finding new ways to absorb the surplus carbon dioxide that we will be fine? Well no, of course we won't. Something needs to change. So is global warming real? Yes, it is. Is it in some way contributed by humans? Yes. In fact, this is something that every scientific body of national and international standing agrees on, and those who disagree tend to be in some way connected to oil. The problem is, is that the general public are not particularly well informed and have little access to information. So, what will happen if we continue to ignore the facts? Well, that would make a much scarier episode of Life's Biggest Questions. I'm Rebecca Felgate, thank you for watching this video. Obviously, it is a very big topic that has a lot of attached data and statistics, so if you feel you have anything to add, do let me know in the comments section down below. But for now, stay curious, stay alert, and never, ever, ever stop questioning. I will see you next time.